Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to go over the spoilers for Fallout. Uh, it's supposed to release on March 8th. Spoiler season starts tomorrow on the 20th. When you watch this, it'll be the 19th, so the following day. Um, we'll get started with the actual spoilers. Today, I'm just going to talk about the uh, the cards that have been spoiled in the preseason. Here are my thoughts on those. See if it's worth buying or at least adding to your collections for improving your decks. First off, we have Almost Perfect. I love the... Hate all of this card. It gives a creature a power and toughness of 9-10 and has Indestructible. I'm guessing the almost perfect part is that it's got nine power missed it by that much <laughs> uh a lot of humor added in the design of this card idolized uh, two mana aura enchanted creature whenever this creature attacks alone gets plus x plus x for x is the number of non-land permanents you control holy cow this is kind of like uh the bunnycorn from wildsville drain only now it's an aura this is a pretty powerful aura it's up there with all that glitters, although it's significantly better because it counts all non-land permanents. Rather, all that glitters only cares about artifacts and enchantments. Vault 101 Birthday Party. It's a saga. First chapter, you make a 1-1 soldier and a food token. Second and third chapters, you put an aura or equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. If an equipment is put into the battlefield this way, you may attach it to a creature you control. That's kind of nice. It segues the costs of equipments and uh, it treats them kind of like auras, so that's kind of nice. I like that it's also a recovery option should you lose any of your auras or equipment. Mr. House, President and CEO. Whenever you roll four or higher, create a 3-3 three, three robot. If you roll a six or higher, and say create that token and a treasure token. Oh, it's kind of cool. So for four mana, you roll a six-sided die plus an additional six-sided die for each mana from treasure spent to activate this. Oh, damn. So if you spend four treasure to activate this ability, you roll four die. That's kind of dope. Hard to get sixes consistently. I don't know. It's it's just a nice little value piece. I don't think it's too crazy. At least the top ability is separate from the bottom ability, but I don't know how many cards are in Magic that support a six-sided die rolling, except for Handful from the D&D sets. And then outside of that, they're mostly banned cards because it came in the uh, unsanctioned, just unglued sets in general. So I hope this set introduces a lot of die rolling um rewarding or at least enablers because like this is a reward for rolling dice you need something that causes you to roll dice if you want to really take advantage of that first paragraph rad storm before mana you can proliferate for your storm count that's kind of cool i think a lot of poison decks are going to appreciate this proliferate such a a niche ability you need counters in play for you to take advantage of it so it's strictly a card you play on the back end of several other spells which fits the storm mechanic quite nicely you, you just need to have something to target with it you could cola vending machine create a food token whenever you sack food create a tap treasure token okay you're exchanging food for treasure and um because the texts are broken up you could sacrifice food by other means other than you know gaining three life there are plenty of things out there that let you sack artifacts or uh, tokens for that matter. So this is a nice card. And that you replace it with a strictly better artifact in my opinion. Over encumbered. We can get it. No. Let it go. We're not leaving it behind. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like this. Two mana aura. You enchant an opponent. When... It enters the battlefield, the enchanted opponent creates a clue, food, and junk token. At the beginning of combat, an enchanted opponent's turn, that player may pay one for each artifact that they control. If they don't, creatures can't attack this combat. Ooh, this is actually really good. Because it says for each artifact they control, people love playing artifacts. This might be pretty damning um, against the right opponents. Like right now, in EDH, the Urza Saga is super popular and making artifacts that scale off of themselves is like their win condition. You enchant someone with this, then you might actually prevent them from ever attacking you. I don't know what a junk token does, but I imagine it's just a useless artifact. Because that's what it was in the game, if you ever played Fallout. I'll be interested to see what a junk token is. But that bottom ability is quite effective at preventing people from attacking you. Vats. Four mana with split second. Choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness. Destroy the chosen 
creatures. Oh, that's kind of cool. I would be surprised if this only manages to kill one thing. I can see us killing a lot of stuff on cast. This might be a pretty good staple in mono black or just in control decks in general. So I'm looking forward to Vats. Alpha Deathclaw. Menace Trample for six. The six six. When it enters the battlefield, it becomes monstrous. You get to destroy a target permanent. The death claws from the Fallout games are the scariest enemies you could come across in the game. <laughs> They'll one-shot you most of the time if you're low, a uh, low level, or if you're not in power suit armor. Pretty fitting card for what it does. I like that it blows up two things on the back end and it gets even bigger. Cool card. Oh, well, it looks like they're bringing serialized cards into the set, so if you want to buy the collector's editions of stuff, you can. Looks like Bobblehead has a 500 in particular. It's a three drop mana rock, and then for five mana, you get to draw X cards or X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Um, I don't remember how many different stats were in Fallout. Don't quote me, but I feel like there's six different bobblehead types. There might be more. I don't remember, but this could be fun if you can get all, you know, the Voltron pieces in play. And to make the ugly Mega Mega Me. Draw a ton of cards off of the five mana ability. Normally I don't go for three drop mana rocks, but uh, I'll be curious what the other bobbleheads do. If they're also just three drop artifacts that produce mana, I don't think that's the case because there's a different bobblehead for each different stat in the game. Ooh, Wasteland's getting a full art treatment. I like the art in particular. I like the comic book style stuff. I think it's better than the Wasteland I currently have. Uh, I think I have a Seeger Lair one, but my channel's all about pop culture. If you haven't uh, realized the title of the channel, I'll probably replace mine with this one just because I love Fallout. Another Soul Ring. I feel like they keep making more and more full art Soul Rings and now it's getting actually difficult for me to choose which one to play. It's nice that there's so many of them, I guess, that are full art. Your Soul Ring might actually like tell people what you're all about, if that makes sense, because there's so many different full art ones out there that at this point you're just picking the one that may represent your personality the most. Crucible Worlds. We play lands from your graveyard? Heck yeah. Or should I say, geck yeah. <laughs> Think I have a full art treatment of this card as well. I'm not entirely sure if I want to replace it. Could always use more Crucible Worlds in the, the Magic community. It's a really great card. Arcane Signet. I love the Pip-Boy version of it. This is also another iteration that's been getting a lot of full art treatments lately. Take your pick. What do you think represents your interest the most? The Vault Boy has really tiny fingernails, kind of grosses me out. Um, <laughs> just stop biting your nails, my dude. Rex the Cyberhound. Deals damage to a player, they mill two and you get two energy. You get to pay two energy to choose target creature card in a graveyard, exile it with a brain counter on it. Rex has all activated abilities of all cards, exiled with brain counters on them. I can appreciate this because they specifically have a counter on them. It's like, say Rex is your commander. If it dies and you replay him, you still retain all the abilities of all the cards you exiled with this. Uh, I like that it also can target any creature from any graveyard. It's an interesting bear, and I feel like it's breakable in some way if you exile the right creatures. Obviously, if you're playing a combo deck, probably could only reliably count on your own creatures, but who knows? Maybe uh, there's something worth exiling in other people's graveyards. Dr. Madison Lee. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. Pay one energy, target your creature gets plus one, plus so, trample in haste. Pay three, get to draw a card. Pay five, return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I like that they're bringing energy back. It kind of really fits the Fallout series quite nicely since it's, you know, it's an apocalyptic world where energy is really valued. <laughs> It kind of does a little bit of everything. Card advantage, a haste enabler, and then um, get a recovery option as well. I hope the energy expenditure doesn't get like too out of hand, you know what I mean? Because historically they've printed cards where there's so many energy symbols that it's difficult to count. Five is pushing it a little bit. I don't know, maybe I have dyslexia, but like, I had to really look at this and be like, is that four, is that six? No, it's five. But like, that happens the longer horizontally we go. You know what I mean? And that's usually a common complaint among players is I wish they just put a number next to the symbol and that we could just avoid 
the confusion all together. But here we are. Gary Clone has squad. When it attacks, each creature you control named Gary Clone gets plus one plus zero to share. Interesting card. Very self-explanatory. Caesar, Legion's Emperor. Whenever you attack, you may sack another creature. When you do, choose two. Create two one one red white soldier tokens with haste and tap that are attacking. You can draw a card, lose a life, or it deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. That's kind of nice. I would say in the early game, you're drawing cards, making 1-1s, one um, and then the mid to late game, you're making 1-1s one and punching people for a ton of damage. The only thing that kind of sucks about this card is the tokens you create are uh, tapped and attacking, so people could just easily block and kill them, keep your creature count nice and low. So, I don't know, maybe there's a way... For you to get around that like dolman's gate or uh Iroas. the other thing that this thing doesn't care about the type of tokens it's just they have to be creature tokens so if you're just playing any creature token deck you'll fit in nicely because you'll deal a ton of damage with this thing the other thing about this card is uh caesar himself doesn't need to attack it'll trigger whenever you attack with anything so that's nice there's a new status effect that i guess goes on players I mean, if you're pre-combat main phase if you have any rad counters mill that many cards for each downline card mill this way you lose one life and add a rad counter holy cow <laughs> so there's a new kind of like lethal ailment that could be affecting the game now it's kind of like a uh, experience or poison in a way, but uh, I like what radiation does in particular. Once you get radiated, uh, you start losing life, you mill cards, and with each passing turn, it makes it gets worse. Kind of like in the game. I like it a lot. I'll be interested to see the cards that enable this strategy. Um, I feel like you'll die from the life loss before the mill, but you never know in magic. Very cool. Feral Ghoul. Menace. Whenever another creature control dies, pull some swing counter on it. When it dies, each opponent gets a number of rad counters equal to its power. Oh my god. <laughs> well, uh, I was curious what would enable it, and this is a pretty good enabler. Yeah, you don't even have to, like, rely on the plus one plus one counter theme to get it bigger. You can get it bigger by other means with, like, auras and in equipment, and have it died just put a ton of rad counters on people this seems like a pretty good win condition in my opinion i could see this as a, a black staple in the future because it doesn't put the rad counters on yourself it puts it on your opponents in particular your opponents will probably die from the life loss Lethal radiation poisoning detected. before the mill this is an awesome card the wise mothman when it enters the battlefield or attacks each player gets a rad counter this includes yourself. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on each up to X target creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. Oh, I wonder why they say milled this way because the abilities are broken up so it doesn't care how the mill occurs. But it's talking as if it cares about the top of paragraph, but it actually doesn't. Green black has a way, a lot of ways to mill themselves. Uh, blue has a lot of ways of milling others. I think color scheme wise and focusing on mill, it's pretty powerful. Like if you put um, the Hermit Druid in your own deck and you mill a bunch of cards, that could be a lethal play. You fill your deck up with, you know, maybe one or two basics you mill over half your library distribute a ton of counters on your stuff and then you go to combat and you might be able to finish people off dog meat ever loyal and enters the battlefield mill five then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand the thing that you return doesn't have to have been milled from dog meat it just has to be in your graveyard that's kind of nice whenever a creature control that's enchanted or equipped attacks create a junk token okay so this is what a junk token does it's an artifact with sack this artifact exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn Ooh, it's a uh, impulse effect token i love impulse effects now we get like the equivalent of clue tokens for impulse only it's better because you don't have to invest any mana into it that's a powerful token it's much better than i expected dog meat uh, you're a pretty powerful card <laughs> it's strange because most of the time you want to play auras and equipment on one thing and make something really tall this wants you to go really wide which could be a little bit of a challenge because splitting your deck into multiple directions at least half you want to be creatures the other half you want to be ores and or equipments but if the option ever occurs where you don't have anything else to equip or uh enchant you could always just do the tall strategy and finish people off that way um and there's tons of auras or equipment that copy themselves like blood forge battle axe and then um 
There's also tons of things that are auras or equipment that put more bodies into play. So there are ways I feel like you could do this without hindering your deck construction too badly. This would be a nice deck challenge build uh, for sure. And these are the lands. It's interesting because they have four new school and old school games. Um, in the first two Fallout games, they are top-down uh, RTSs that are turn-based. Kind of like the old school fan Final Fantasy games, which is why we get this view like this. And then there is the new school version, which is a third person, and they do that for each land type. So that's kind of nice and cool. That brings us to the end of today's review for the preseason spoilers. Like I said, I'll put this out on the 19th, and then on the 20th, it starts. So I hope you all enjoyed my interpretations and uh, good cards that would complement this set. Um, if you liked what you saw, subscribe, because I'm going to cover everything in the set. And I also do plenty of other things other than just do spoiler reviews. So everyone take care now. Have a great night. Bye.